Uh, hello. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, when our next guests last joined us, they were in the midst of their first world tour. What started as just a podcast became a sensation, then turned into a phenomenon, and now I, I don't know how the hell you describe it. Uh, hundreds of millions of downloads globally, a critically acclaimed HBO comedy special, God knows how many books sold, and now they've just kicked off their second world tour. Please welcome back to the show, from my dad wrote a porno, the truly great Jamie Morton, James Cooper. Cooper and Alice Levine. Come on, guys. Let's do it up. We got to... More! Not enough! Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, hey, everybody. How's Welcome it going? Back. Thanks Hi. so much. It's so awesome Good to, to see you. Likewise. Yeah. New chairs, I think. Yeah, are the they? chairs have changed. Be, yeah. You've yeah, really uh, well, we, you know, upped the budget. We're not one to rest on our laurels here at Bill. <laughs> we are constantly looking at new ways to sit. Yes. Uh, and we're enjoying it. They're coming yeah. back. We need new furniture. Well, that's how <laughs> we get you to return. We, we tell you there's new chairs, <laughs> perhaps a pillow upon request. Yeah, very nice throw well, cushion. We just yeah. want to make sure you're cozy. Uh, guys, as we were saying backstage, so much has happened since the last time you were here. Yeah. I'm so excited to catch up and talk to you about all the amazing things. How are you doing? You just started the tour. Uh, like a week ago, right? Um, no, we were, well, we were in Australia. You were in Australia, right? Yeah, yeah, like two weeks ago. Um, okay, two weeks yeah. ish. Uh, it was been amazing. Yeah, we did two nights at the Sydney Opera House. Insane. Defiling that lovely building with porn. Uh, Which they have actually now closed for two and a half years. Yeah, Not because have. of anything we did. That was planned. <laughs> what did you do? It Just needs a good deep clean yeah. is what it needs. Power um, hoses and yeah. stuff. Yeah, shut up, wash it out. You got to air it out, really. <laughs> yeah, Big exactly. fans in the doors, all the windows <laughs> open kind of thing. Yeah. Unreal. Why'd you start there this time? Why Sydney? Um, because it's summer. <laughs> yeah, it was summer over there. Nice yeah. James wanted a tan. Um, it's just the way it worked, and also because we really wanted to play the Sydney Opera House because that's such an iconic venue, and they insisted on closing it for refurbishment. But also, yeah. um, <laughs> like I mean, much like here, Aussies are smutty as hell. I mean, they, unbelievably they so. Love a bit of blue for yeah. the for the dads uh, or from the dads, um, and that was our kind of barometer, wasn't it? It was like, yeah. how will this show go down? Oh right, okay, yeah, they're still pervs. We've, there are still pervs out there. Yeah. We're good. We're safe. Because we hadn't been there for a good like three years, mm. and they've got filthier, if anything. They're starved of pornography. <laughs> Everybody's everybody's growing and evolving in their yeah. own way. Yeah. Uh, th tell me about this particular show, uh, Belinda's Dirty Thirty. The, it's the big three zero. Is this another lost chapter? Did Rocky write something specifically for this tour? Like, well, good question. Because okay. yes, Dad mm -hmm. has decided that because he's like with like five books in now, he thinks that he's really nailed writing in general. He thinks he can do it now. So now he's kind of he's he's kind of pushing himself, isn't he guys? I mean he's, for those that don't know as well, he he hasn't nailed no, writing. Yeah, sorry. I mean he he terrible got I, would worse, be, if I would be surprised if he could write a shopping list at this stage so <laughs> but what he's tried to do is you remember those kind of books when you were a kid and you can pick where the story goes oh, choose your own adventure right so he's decided to write one of those a kind of a pick your porno so it's going to be different every night and then <laughs> at various points through the chapter we'll get the audience to decide where the story goes which sort of gets us off the hook because it's kind of like well I mean if this is terrible then you picked it so yeah yeah, yeah it's your fault it's on them yeah. I, I, without spoiling anything or getting too granular, do, does he allow you to decide, like, in the middle of a, a sexual encounter? Does he say, if you want to go up or down, we'll say? Like, does he give the audience that choice? Sure. I mean, there's no stone left unturned. I yeah. mean, it's what you're describing is may, maybe, say, a kind of, like, a narrative high point, whereas he'll just do it wherever or whenever. Because with those books, the thing is, right, that structurally they're quite complicated. You know, you have to make sure that every route is a good journey or a good story which he has just not put that pressure on himself no. has he no there's that, like he's really freed himself from that responsibility every so. version is rubbish <laughs> no matter what decision you make no, it'll go nowhere there's no ideal outcome <laughs> yeah uh one of the things i loved about watching the hbo comedy special and, and, and getting a chance to see it if the people that couldn't make it out to see you guys live is sort of how you guys expanded the format and, and grew the show and the way uh you know you would go out into the crowd and work the room and all these different things and, and have them recreate scenes you know what did you guys learn on that first round and, and doing all that that helped you sort of plan this one uh well uh, we really liked the kind of audience interaction element. It keeps it new for us every night. So we wanted to kind of make sure there was more of that this time. So we're, when, as Jamie says, the audience kind of decide what happens each time. And we thought of kind of fun ways we can make those decisions. So that's been really fun. And that's something we learned. 
What else have we learned from doing HBO? I guess it's like when people come to a show, because people come in like full cosplay. It's like it, I, the, the people that like Rocky's work, I think, are people who take a deep dive into a world. So, yeah, they dress up as characters. They come en masse. But also people tell us that they come on their own because you're just in a room full of friends, essentially, because you have this very unique shared hobby <laughs> so as much as possible we kind of wanted to harness that and it, and and this time around it's belinda's 30th so it is a party it does feel like a party yeah um mainly because everybody gets really smashed imagine going to a live sex show on your own <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what has your life become you just sat there watching and, and people do drink a lot at our shows which is fun so everyone's kind of you know half cut <laughs> we, we we played the royal albert hall in london and they ran out of wine the entire venue. Nice little badge of honor, yeah. isn't it? The Five and a half thousand people <laughs> ran out of wine. Unbelievable. And that was mainly just wine. Jamie's family, if I'm perfectly honest. That was honest. just mum and dad, yeah. <laughs> how often did they come back and tell you like how often that happens? Were you the first? I think I think we were the first, weren't we? Yeah. It was yeah, we, we were breaking records everywhere. Not maybe the, the ones that you want to break. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Why wasn't that in the press? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they put it in the programme for the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. Um one of the other things, like the 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 the, the a charming part of the show, if you will, the endearing part is you two reacting to, you know, Jamie reading it for the first time and like hearing it for the first time. Was it interesting sort of navigating, doing this live now, uh, kind of hammering out like your stand up set, learning where the laughs are? It's, it's good. like you said, we have these ways to keep it new every night. But what was it like sort of figuring that out and keeping it fresh and finding that energy? So I think because it's always the, the um, podcast has always just been improv you know we we just sit in a room and we record more than we need a lot more than we need as jamie edits it he will tell you there's a lot that ends up on the cutting room yeah floor. um but with the sh with the show i guess we kind of we did a bit of work in progress didn't we but like, i think because it's still really new to us every show there's stuff where we're really desperately just trying to make each other laugh still which is really nice and i'm sure if we're still touring it in 2027 20, we'll be like james it's time for your joke now off your pop <laughs> um but at the moment it just feels really loose and, and none of us are comedians um as you'll know if you've ever listened to the podcast um but yeah i think that that has to be there that kind of feeling that we're constantly trying to trip each other up or make each other giggle or corpse because that's what makes it fun for us so I noticed your reaction when I said, oh, you edited it as well. You went, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you seemed thrilled about I being love able to editing do it. it. It's my favorite part. Uh, just sit on my own, listening to my dad's porn again and again and again. Um, no, but yeah, we do, we do record for a lot more than we use because uh, we just want to make sure it's the best or the you know, worst 40 minutes that we can do a week. Uh, but it's fun, yeah. Uh, talk to me about, so uh, we, we just, for those that are following on that, I have listened, we've just wrapped up uh, book five recently. Uh, well, last year, right before the tour. Yeah. And I know the tour is the primary focus right now. Have you guys started work on book six yet? Or no, you're just focusing on the live shows. That's just a memory. We'll do that later. Sure. I mean, dad's written loads of books, so <laughs> <laughs> the books are there. How many I think he's on like... Yeah, 10 or 11. I dread to think. You know how, like, Game of Thrones went ahead of the series? They <laughs> ran out of books. That'll never happen with Rocky. No, 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 no. It's how far we want to go with him is the, is the question. How far oh. Jamie's willing to go. Yeah, more say, that. Not only that, but also... Ha has Rocky continued writing since he's been made aware of his genius status in the world? Like, what does that do? I'm excited to see how that informs his writing. I mean, don't call him a genius, because uh, <laughs> he's, he's not. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, the fifth book, actually the fifth season, was the first book that had been written post the podcast existing. So we've hit that point. So we've hit that point. It's worse than ever. <laughs> he's learned nothing. If anything, he's doubled down on how bad he is. Because um, he's kind of like, oh, you think it's funny? Well, I'm just going to make sure that I stay even more true to myself, which is an interesting way to go. Yeah. You know, don't learn from it. It's given him confidence. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's all the more fascinating now that we've got this whole spy story that's yes, happening exactly. and all these crazy characters. Well, we'll get to it. Uh, you know what? I wrote down, just <laughs> since we're talking about season five, just a couple just of things. Complaints. I feel like this is just... <laughs> yeah, I have, no, I have notes. No, just things that stood out that still got, like, the cow's moo... Uh, gave me a run for my running, got me. It Curry Be Worse was probably my favorite thing that he wrote down of that oh, whole chat. The restaurant called It, it Curry, Curry Be Worse. Be verse. Uh, Curry yes. Be Verse, yeah. Yeah, yeah a it, German. That's why, that's, that's where I have evidence for genius here, I believe. <laughs> I think these support, a decoupage and telly was a great diversion that you yes, guys. Yeah. What's the longest you've had to cut down one of those diversions? Like, what's oh. the, like, you guys, sometimes you go off on a tangent and it feels like we'll never get you back. And I love it. <laughs> I absolutely I love can't. it. So I've done my, my job well then, editing <laughs> that. Uh, where the hell is this going? Um, um, the decoupage and telly thing went on for about 45 minutes. Because yeah. James just couldn't handle the fact 
Well, well these two women were, it's two of the characters, Belinda and her friend Bella, and you find, they're just spending an evening together, yeah. and you find out that Bella's hobby is telly. Her hobby is telly. That's not a hobby, for a start. And then Belinda's hobby is decoupage, which I discovered was cutting out bits of magazine and, like, sticking them to tables. Yeah. And the idea of Belinda, like, cutting out bits of magazine and Bella watching telly and thinking it's a hobby, I just... I couldn't breathe. I just thought it was so funny. I was like, what? In a, in a porn book. In a porn book! <laughs> in a porn book that's so supposed to get you turned on. It was just... Bizarre. Yeah. Again, genius. <laughs> uh, but then there's stuff that isn't in the book. Like sometimes the book is a vehicle for us having chats about various things. And, you know, like discovering that when Jamie was little, he grew up in the theatre and uh, all of his friends in the theatre were like 50 and 60 year old men and women. And he was like eight. Mentors, and he was, not friends. And he was being really chill about it. Whereas at, no, at like eight, he was hanging out with a woman called Val, who was 60. <laughs> and we were like, this isn't normal. And, and he like, went to her birthday, her like 60th birthday <laughs> party. It was a great I time. We couldn't deal. And Jamie's just like, what? Like everybody had older friends. We're like, yeah, when you're like 14, they're 60. Not when you're 10, they're 70. But also, it kind of explains why you pronounce Sega Sega. Sega. Because you yeah, were exactly. like, well, all these cultured people, that's yeah. how they would say I'm just a theatre kid, geek. Like, it's not, sh I shouldn't be mocked for that. All the time we discovered he smuggled a cake fork through airport security. Okay, okay. A okay. cake fork? Who has a cake fork in their bag? Right, next question. So, uh, in case this, you've got to eat This is me editing this interview yeah, now. You're doing it in real yeah. time. That's how great you are at it. Yeah. Uh, you guys, since you've been here last, you won a, a Webby Award, and I'm yeah. curious, has that gone to Rocky's head? How did he feel about the <laughs> He didn't know what it was. I was like, Dad, it's a big deal. It's an American award. He's like, great. Okay. Good. I thought for sure some kind of statue is all Rocky wanted. It's in his house. <laughs> oh, and he it? just oh. uses it to like like hang things on. He doesn't really know what it is. Yeah. But he no, he's very grateful of it. Yes. Me. Oh yeah, he loves it. He likes the fact that he's won something. He couldn't really care. If if it was an Oscar, he wouldn't really know what that was either, to be honest. So uh, you know, we talk about genius. You guys had uh, some incredible guests on the show as well. Yes. Uh, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda, uh, Dan Levy. You had a dame. You had Dame Emma uh, Thompson. Yes. W were you more nervous for your first live show or to speak with a dame on your show? <laughs> were you nervous at all to talk? I well, mean, she know? invited us around to her house for a start and to cook us, and she was going to cook us dinner. So if we were nervous anyway, we were even more nervous because we had to be like, you had to be on your best behavior. What if she's a terrible cook? Um, best behavior? You weren't on your best behavior. <sighs> no, James was so, not on his best should behavior. Should I say that? Yeah, say all. it. You okay, weren't fine. on your best behavior. So she, she's won two Oscars. She keeps them in her downstairs. <laughs> she keeps them in her downstairs toilet. And I'd heard somewhere that she does it so that people can, like, pick them up and, like... Have a look. This so, is something that James created in the... That never? isn't why they're in the toilet. I heard them... Who said In James's so Oscar-winning circles, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. We all keep them in the loo. You know that, right? So we get there, and I'm like, can I use the toilet? <laughs> and go straight for the <laughs> toilet. Bad. Yeah, get my phone out. Take about 30 selfies with the Oscars. I'm he like, held... He picked like, them up. Like, full camera roll, like... <laughs> You can't touch other, some other people's Oscars. Then her daughter somehow later on looks on my phone, sees all the selfies. She's like, She's what like, did oh, you do? Sorry, I didn't mean to open it on that. I was just going to look something else. Like, really uncomfortable. It's like, James, just at least at least wait till you're like a few hours into the evening before you slip off. It's and... an Oscar. When are you going to get to hold an Oscar? It's true. You saw an opportunity and, and you seized and I took it. it. <laughs> exactly. And I can't fault you for that. You took one of them with it. I took an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. She now has now. one Oscar. <laughs> I saw him scratch his back with it in the green room. I yeah. thought that was odd. I, uh, was that before you even recorded? It was, was before that... dinner, for sure. It was before. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. I don't think he'd even said hello um, yet. You were like, can you see the toilet, please? It's fine, it's fine. Uh, what has been like the, the, the most, you know, you think of all these things that have happened, uh, the accolades, the special, the, the dame. Uh, what's the most surreal <laughs> thing? What's the craziest thing? Uh, obviously, you can't believe any of it, but what was the? What was there a uh, one thing you were like, this is just silly? It was surreal getting Lynn manuel Miranda to come on the show because we, we went to Wales. He was filming Dark Materials. We've been, we've been trying to kind of meet up, and he was everywhere, and we were everywhere. And he was like, do you want to just come to Wales? So we got a really budget Airbnb in Wales. We were like, really Lynn, this is the address. And he just turned up and we just like... Had he thought drinks. it was a crack den, didn't he? He, he did. Like, Why yeah. have you invited Because the me? doorway was just sort of like one of those really heavy duty metal doors. And then there was sort of like a massive 
bin, like a massive dumpster either side of the doorway. And we were like, no, no, I think you found the right place. We'll be right down. And he must have been like, what am I doing? And he, 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 he just landed from LA because he was at the Emmys. And then he's suddenly in a crack den in Wales. And we're like, sorry for bringing you here. I know you're not used to this. Sort of stuff. And we record, we're a bit shonky, like our setup is anyway. So our mics are usually on piles of books. Yeah. But there were no books in this in this B&B. So it's sort of like piled on just like various bits of kitchen equipment, you know, like on a colander and stuff. And he must have been like, yeah, what the hell? Where's my panic button? Just <laughs> yeah. well, what I love about that episode is how game he is to start workshopping ideas for the musical. And mm, like, yeah. he was like in right away. He's like, all right, let's talk about this. <laughs> Start like spitting ideas out. Could you, in that moment, that that had to have been more than you had ever hoped would happen, right? Oh that he God. would be that in love with the idea. Like, yeah, and that, yeah, he was such a kind of little super fan. He knew everything about the show, which was cool. Um, but yeah, the fact that we were literally brainstorming how the Belinda Blink musical could work, what the songs were going to be. I mean, that consultation should have cost you know, know. hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. surely. You yeah. had to pick this this one of the, the greatest uh, musical minds of our generation. You got to just sit and talk about this with them for like, I don't know, how long were you guys there? Like an hour or whatever it is. A couple yeah. of hours, yeah. yeah. And we spent, what, 40 pounds on the B&B. I mean, we should have just... <laughs> We should have found the budget. We should have. He he invited us to go see Hamilton with him, didn't he, as well, the week before. And Jamie Al and Alice couldn't go. So I went on my own to watch Hamilton with Lin-Manuel Miranda. It was <laughs> the oddest afternoon of my life. Jamie and Alice were like, so annoyed. And didn't he turn to you and go, did you like it? As if you're going to be like, a few things I just yeah. want to mention. Yeah. I have some notes. Here are my notes. He's watching um, you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the songs aren't catchy. Sorry. Act uh. two drags, Lin. It does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's a great I can't understand all the words. It's so fast. <laughs> No, it's good. I just don't know why it was so popular. That's all. I just—it was huge. Like, why was it so popular? Uh, unbelievable. All right, so let's see. We covered it. We, we got the amazing guests. We got the HBO special. That you're the tour right now. You're selling out dates. What have I missed? What, what else? Well, have you we're guys coming been? to New York. We're coming to do a big show. It's going to be our biggest show ever. It's and where be are you going to be? Biggest. Um, we're playing a little venue. What's it called? Um, it's called uh, my 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 dad calls it New York City Hall. <laughs> it's not called that. It's Ray. <laughs> it's Radio City <laughs> Music Hall. Uh, that's how much he isn't in. The the culture of the world. I love um, that. Yeah, I know it's great. So he's going to come and he'll just, I don't know where we'll end up. You think we're playing the town hall? <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, we're, we're playing Radio City, which is which really exciting. Which has actual shows there. There are proper things on there, and then we're going to play it. So hopefully. And it's big. It's huge. And we're going to be on, it's just like this setup on that massive stage. Everyone's going to be like. Don't tell them that. Oh, sorry, it's no, I mean. It's a spectacular. No, it's yeah. stage. Chairs are much larger. You should see the there. staging, yeah. my God. Did you see the opening ceremony for the Olympics in the UK? Oh, it's kind of like that. Very yeah, it's fun. a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. The trampolines, the whole nine. Yeah. You guys go out. There's a huge, there's a, a, a huge built-in organ that is the entire building that's there. Oh, really? Uh, well, that's yeah, I've seen uh, John Mulaney like made use of it during. Not that I'm like you know uh, telling you guys what to do at your special here, but <laughs> just you know, pitch some ideas if you know anyone that plays an organ. Yeah. There's, sure. a, there's at least an organ gag there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The, the, Belinda can play an organ pretty well. I think you know she she, she has that covered. Um, Oh, God, I love when you guys come through. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so much fun having you here. We're not done yet. We've got a couple of questions in the room. I want to make sure we have time for those. We're going to go for those really quick. You should have already have uh, microphones in your hands. Uh, Marta, you, you got the first one. Where are you? Go for it. Right here. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming here today. And I just want to thank you, thank you also for um, creating my group here at university. Like, we just bonded over my dad wrote a porno. And it's <laughs> really? So fun. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. um, and my question is, why did Rocky think it was a good idea to go from a porno to, like, a full-on action movie? Yeah, it's yes. a good question. <laughs> um, so the book started as a kind of just standard erotic novel based in the pots and pans industry. Standard. <laughs> Stan standard erotic novel. Standard, you know. That yeah. old trope. I've seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And has now evolved into this full-on, like, spy novel where there's, like, um, moles in the company who are trying to steal, like, trade <laughs> secrets and things like that. It's gone nuts. Yeah. Um, I and think, he, why has that happened? I think it's, well, A, boredom, because he has got the attention span of, you know, a goldfish. But also, I think he always kind of wanted to write that sort of book. But the only reason that he started doing erotica was he, he thought that it would sell more as in a Fifty Shades of Grey way. So actually, I think it was just all a big elaborate hoax to, to tell this really quite rubbish spy story that doesn't really go he anywhere. he loves Bond, doesn't he? He loves James Bond. Um, um, yeah, he can't really do but it. But thank God he did. I mean, because like, after three books, you're like, is something going to happen? And then it does. And you know, yeah, now it, I'm re I really want to know what happens next. It doesn't. Still, Things still don't happen. It's just a spy thing, but nothing happens. Have you read ahead? Have you? No, 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 no. I couldn't possibly. Yeah. No. <laughs> 
I need some time off. All right, because I was going to ask, uh, personally, I need to know that Toffee Apple Chew is going to be okay. Well, but if you, you don't we, don't, we don't know. The, the, only, the only horse character in the whole book. But, I mean, it's taken people by storm. It's a character. Uh, it's a horse. Um, but such personality. <laughs> Um, he introduced the coconuts and I took them right there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The horse noise. I'm, we're bringing in, make the, we always vibe. kind of joke that he writes indelible characters, but that is like some indelible horse. Someone did a kind of like um, March Madness of all the characters of Blended Blinks on Twitter. <laughs> Toffee Apple Chew came second. <laughs> Insane. Yeah, damning. Absolutely yeah. damning. Yeah, totally. I, speaking of the characters, we'll go to our next question in a second. I wrote this down. I think it was episode five of season five. Because I thought, there is there is nothing you can't do when it comes to voices and characters. And then Petra showed up. Mm. And I thought... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't do her. Yeah. Has it, uh, as you've gotten deeper into the series, has it gotten challenging to find new voices and new ways to do all these uh, different characters? Matt, you know the answer to that. I, it's uh, very challenging. It's quite. <laughs> I mean, I can't ever do them again so whatever I do in the moment if they, they if, if that character comes back three chapters later I'm completely screwed because I can't, yeah there is no skill there as you can tell but I try my hardest and some of the accents that are really hard like wasn't there a Boston Brazilian doctor yeah how do I even like, how start do you do Boston that? via Brazil what is that who I gave a lisp I don't know it's yeah I love how uncomfortable you guys get audibly uncomfortable when you do bish and every, oh his face mm. oh, yeah, what is on, the bish face Oh, sorry to put him on the spot. Yeah. We <laughs> all put him on the spot I'm immediately. Like, what is Bitcoin? It's been a while. He's like. the one that's like, really got like, a lot of guitar. Yeah, so he's like, it's like hello, my special fan. It's very kind of like, it's, your face kind of folds in itself. And, well, your face folds well, yeah. in itself. Um, well, yours too, if you do bish. <laughs> Go on, do bish. <laughs> Everybody do bish. Everyone do bish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Thank just trying to bring that. the books to life as best I can. I think he should do uh, have a career in like voiceover work and like a Pixar, Pixar, Pixar art on, on the phone thing, every day. Yeah, when Pixar finally makes that jump into the adult film industry, <laughs> we all know they're going to make. Can you imagine? You will be the first phone call. It's a ticking time bomb. A yeah. Pixar porno. It's not That'll if, it's when. Nice. Yeah, exactly. It's right there. Uh, we're going to do one more from the room. This is from uh, Farima. You should have a microphone as well. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, um... When did you guys realize when your podcast has really taken off? Mm -hmm. And have you guys ever been recognized in public for your podcast? Um, okay, so the first bit, when did we realize? I think we, when we first read the books, when Jamie first brought us the books, we knew that it was gold. Um, before we even started recording it, we loved the books. But when we actually made the show, I think... Do you think probably when Elijah Wood was on the show, that was like a moment when we yeah. felt like... Well, when he, when he like tweeted about it, yeah. kind of, we realised that people listen to it not just in the UK <laughs> and not just in our front room. It's been leaked. Um, yeah, we thought yeah. we'd make it like a local radio show. We didn't quite yeah. grab the concept that a podcast was global. Um, so that kind of helped us realise, oh, this has spread further than we thought. And then what was the other question? Um, have we ever been spotted as a... I think yeah, we're, we're, weirdly, for a podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah considering it sh should be anonymous, really, because our yeah. faces are... And it's really Not embarrassing when you're like, you know, <laughs> drunk in a kebab shop <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and so I get a selfie, I'm like, eh, sure, I don't want to be seen. Do they uh, demand characters of you like I just did three minutes ago? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes. People, people are very nice, though. They're very nice. I like it when they go, can we get a picture? And then they like just hand me the phone and I have to take a picture of James and Jamie. I'm like, and me? Okay, cool, I'll take a few. <laughs> what do you guys think of, I uh, uh, saw so on the... Uh, my dad wrote an Instagram, the, the cartoon of people, they did like little animations oh, yeah, of your yeah, podcast. Yeah. Mm. I love that shit. Whenever people do that, yeah, they bring cool, it it? it's cool to see. Yeah, it, the people that listen are really talented. I mean, they're all obviously perverts, which is a shame, but otherwise they, <laughs> they've, they, they've got great careers ahead of them. Yeah, very creative with stuff they send us, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All the fan art and stuff is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and those little animated clips are amazing. Kind of makes you think... You know, maybe we should do something like that. Yeah, There's something there. There, th there is. It's funny because there's like an endless uh, amount of directions you guys could go, but each one is it's like its own little universe and challenge. Like obviously, everyone's like, "When's the movie going to happen? Who would play who?" But like, how could you make a movie? Which I'm sure you're trying to figure out and talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, Matt, how could we? If you could tell us, that'd be great. <laughs> when I crack it, I'll let you know. Can we do a brainstorming session now? I think so. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna wrap things <laughs> yeah. up. Nobody leave, <laughs> and we'll just lock the doors on the outside until we get it. It was um, in the small print. I have to let you go because you have a million things to do. Oh. But uh, thank you so much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having us again. Coming so hanging nice out. Oh, always so much fun to have you here. Such a treat. Such a pleasure. Uh, we're all massive fans. So keep doing what we'll you're doing. We'll see you at the Please. show on the 3rd of April, we the hope. The 3rd of April, is yeah, that it? Radio City. Come. Uh, won't be anywhere else but there. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so where can people get tickets? 
Um, for the ones that aren't sold out. My already. dad wrote a porno.com forward slash live. Very good. Okay. Then that's why I said forward slash, just slash live. It's all the it's same. Oh, whatever slash. <laughs> www. <laughs> 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 HTTP. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yes. You got to get that in there as well. Uh, follow them on my dad Rhoda and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what else can we plug? The podcast has already got millions of people. Uh, the books, where are the books? Anywhere there's books, you can go buy them. Sure. Why book. not? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> anywhere that's got books. Right? Isn't it? Yeah. Not, it's not a lie. Thrift shops. I'm not wrong. You can buy books. Dad's original like ebook still on like Amazon and stuff. So yeah, throw him like two bucks. You know, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Um, very well done. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being a great Thanks, audience. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Guys. Thank Thanks to those who tuned in live. Do all the things we just said. Uh, if you're not already listening to it, you're missing out. Go ahead and listen to it. Make some new friends. Be really pervy. My dad wrote a porno. Uh, check it out. Make a ridiculous amount of noise. Enjoy me in thanking Jamie Morton, James Cooper, and Alison for being here. Come on, guys. Let's go. Hey, that's a lot.